Okay, so I wanted to speak a little bit more about the spiral girdle of eternity uh, as a follow-up because when I published the uh, Arc Telus and the Spiral Girdle video, I had some feedback from several people and especially um, this particular drawing that we got here. So I'm screen capping this to try and kind of take a good look at it. And this image, I think it's a Buddhist image. It was sent to me by Dipti, um, a friend on Facebook who understands these things as well and is always into these kinds of structures. It was really awesome that she sent me this because in the first video I had to make this shitty drawing on a piece of paper with a, just a spiral coming down. But this is apparently some Chinese or Buddhistic um, mandala drawing type thing of eternity itself, which is awesome. So I, I'm not going to have any video of me, but I'm just going to use this because this structure here that you're looking at is the description of the, the, etern the eternal system, reality, you could say, this, the structure of reality. And the funny part about it is, or the good part about it is, is that by me using this map, it actually includes everything that I could ever describe. That's the funny part. You see, it, this, this map, this, this structure of reality can be used for everything. Whatever I've ever spoken about in any of my videos is inside of this system, whether it's outside of existence, which is this top part, this is the top part, the top half, which is outside of existence, and then you have this line going across, and this on the lower side, everything is inside of existence. And this is what I explained about uh, the, the spiral girl of eternity. So what happens is you have these lines, the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven levels coming down from the highest realities into lower realities. Now this is all simultaneously right now. This is the structure of now. Right? This is how the whole universe, let's say, happens, if you wish, which is a wrong word because that suggests movement. This is so instantaneous, it's, it, it's immediate in a way. And because it is so powerful, so, so all-encompassing, the eternal as nature of it has to be spread across time, which is what we see in this lower half. So if we take this lower half here, I can't move that up better up, but yeah, here you go. This is the lower half. Right? This is literally existence. And the other top half is literally out of existence. This is literally, this whole piece is out of existence. These are the heavenly realms, and these are the earthly realms down here. And so what happens in the spiral girdle is that as these levels are created instantaneously, but subsequently, so you, we, would, we would consider that a micro fraction of a nanosecond or something, you know, when it, if we want to relate it to, to time, so fast that... Uh, in a blink of an eye, the whole thing is already done and, and, and there will be no time for us. Instantaneous or absolute time. Um, so what happens is, this coming down, at every level coming down will be an, an I. This will be intelligence, a level of um, the knower or the I that is. And all these eyes are stepped down. We, our world is this world right here. This is the world of being. The world of knowing, the world of the aware consciousness. This is our real world. This is what liberation or spiritual endeavor is about. Discovering your true nature, which is the being that is here. This is the eye ring of, of what we are. And this is the world. Once you get beyond this point, right here, all creation starts right here. This is the beginning of creation. And when creation is, I mean, all form, all thought, everything that you can see, hear, smell, taste, right, which is perception, all the, what we call objective physical world, is all starts right here. When you leave your true place of origin, which is being, which is that which is aware of anything, any object, any thought, you pop into existence. And once existence is born, you get all these layers. You can see here, uh, it seems to be a drawing of the physical earth almost, I think. Physicality. And then you see people in the waters uh, that could be considered, you know, maybe for flat earthers, that would be a dome and the waters above or whatever. But the point is, every layer further out, you get more lost in Maya, more lost in samsara. So this is existence. This is what everybody keeps speaking about, whether it's Graham Hancock or Corey Goody or David Wilcock or all the guys that speak about physical things, including aliens, 
they're still always talking about existence. They're still always talking about this level over here where most people live or more further out. But if this is the labyrinth. This is in infinite form. This place never ends. You never find yourself or reality out into these realms. And you can see down here, the further away from eternity, the further away from the higher levels here, the, you get you get further and further down and you can see the fiery flames of suffering and pain and demons and interdimensional um, beings and suffering. You can see definitely the colors changing from a more harmonic place of even close to the girdle, close to the tip of the girdle. You can see there's like a piece of, of harmony, there's blue colors, there's like a little bit of it looks still like harmonic beings, like angelic uh, systems of realms, whatever you want. And then you go out and out and further and further. And you get further away from reality, the more lost in existence you get, the more lost in Maya, the more lost in samsara. And so this structure explains everything really well. Why? For example, take for example that if you have a family member or a friend that's somewhere in the realms of existence and they're really busy with their work and becoming a millionaire and doing this or that and going on a holiday and have to travel and the whole world and walk up every mountain because it's so important they're somewhere in this in these areas let's say right and they cannot see um, very much up the cone at all in fact they're not aware of their true being the aware conscious being that they are which is now listening to these words which everybody is in that sense we are the same because we are looking from this world down into the existential plane but this is the world of being, the, no, the knowing aspect, the aware aspect, which is a principle. For that, you have to go back to one of the eternity and infinity um, things that I made to explain that what I'm talking about. I'm talking about that which is aware of everything. Now, when you want to have, know bigger realities, you're going to have to turn your face away from this realm. Your, your, your looking has to be not outwards, but inwards and for the people who are not at that level they cannot look up into the cone at any level because to look up into reality back into the cone you actually have to look into nothing which is true meditation which is the capacity to sit still and look into the black dark screen with your eyelids closed which is total blackness total oblivion total, total nothingness if you wish and rest without thought, rest without imaging, imagining, without having to go into the history of your memory or the future projections of your worries about tomorrow or your money or your bank accounts or your work or your life or your children, without conceptualizing, without worrying about the aliens or anything. If you do any of those things, you're in this realm, below the line, in existence, if you are in speculation, theory, philosophizing, verbalizing, expressing exactly what I'm doing right now, is all within the realm because I am using voice and sound and ver words and, and formulations and language to describe this structure, which still is within this, the activity of me doing this and making these videos is still within this realm. And when you're going to go find aliens and you find uh, whether the, the Egyptian pyramids were built by aliens or people or technology and wh whatever, it all is taking place in this trying to figure out the pieces of where the hell you are, what the hell this is. And most people are stuck in there and the ones who are just still busy with their existential life and not even busy with anything, they're completely in this realm here, this area here. And they're not even busy trying to find out what the hell this is. They're taking it for face value. For them, this is really what, what, what existence is all about. This is all they do. They know the physical world, their bodies, they came from that. They know that their mother, their father, their, where they grew up, and they can amass their wealth, and then one day they're going to die. And they don't even question that as some kind of... There's nothing in them that yet is awoken to want to figure out what's going on. And so, for example, my wife was speaking to a lady... It keeps wanting to ask her for attention and she was saying, you know, my wife was saying to her, why are you still, even though you're now divorced and you're going up and down and you're happy one day, unhappy another day, and still 
you're not wondering about what this is and how to get back to the still point of, of emptiness? How come that so much pain and suffering and frustration, and yet you're still completely in, in, uh, enchanted by this world? Why don't you start organizing? Because the closer you get back to the origin, which is right here, the entrance point, back into the cone of eternity, the more harmonic your life gets. The further away you get, the more disharmonic your life is, and the further you get out over here, back towards the cone, uh, which is up towards the cone, the more harmonized your life is. And so the, the people that are not ready are not even looking to organize. They, they are frantically trying to organize existence. And that's still what people like Graham Hancock and stuff do. They're, they're trying to figure out who built the pyramids within the holographic system, trying to trace back into the existential timelines and all that stuff to try to figure out these things like it says anything at all about reality. It only describes the infinitude of possibilities that have come and gone within the fractal um, strings of all the possibilities of the different dimensions. But for you to go home, for you to start really seeing reality for what it is, the only way we can go to do that is back in. And that means you take your attention off of all of this and you put your attention onto the, the black, empty silence of nothingness. That's when you start traveling, and I'm putting that between quotes, traveling in the sense of real inner space traveling. Meditation, true meditation of going into nothing is allowing um, your attention to be so empty or emptied that you actually start gravitating back to the source up, 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 up. And in doing so, you can realize different realms, different levels of reality which are ethereal or energetic or unformed. They're, they're, in, they're still in the unformed world of the spirit, of the consciousness itself, of eternity. And I'll make another video about eternity again because it's not some kind of concept that I'm talking about. It's not some kind of you know, idea. When you rest as it, you, you can know it, be it right now directly, because you are it, because this is the only thing there is. And I'll go into that more of that. But I love this picture that Dipti sent me, this depiction of the system. I mean, had I known it, I would have made the other video with this one. But this is a beautiful drawing of the unformed world and then below the formed world of existence. Every single thing, quantum physics, all the computation, all the thinking, all the philosophizing, all the, the um, trying to figure things out through technology, all light and everything that you can know is in this thing. And it's not real. This is basically the lost um, labyrinth or maze of samsara. This is where you can get infinitely caught up in all kinds of details, whether things are, whether the earth is flat or round, or whether there's the, whether we lost um, um, ourselves in this realm, or whether there was demons that took over and tricked us to stay in this realm. And in a way, it's all true, because in here, everything is true, but it, nothing is the truth. What is true is true for now, and what is the truth is always the truth. But what is true is that, yes, we, we could be considered to be trapped in here, maybe by some entities that wanted to capture us, that have use this as to be stuck in this realm. Well, you can see it any way you want. The fact is, you're free to move up, but you have to be able to let go of this realm and look back into the black void of emptiness, which is true meditation. You have to stop being um, tricked or attracted to this realm, which is always thought, movement, philosophy, verbalizing, thinking, objects, all the senses and perceptions. In other words, desire. The desires keep us in this world. The, the need for anything is, desires, is, is the desirable world. And desire will keep you trapped in here. Not any aliens or any other beings or any demons or any interdimensional entities. Sure, that's all part of it. But you, as consciousness, are always free to move back up into the cone of reality, of eternity. And, and that's why this structure is so, so um, perfect to explain it. So I'll be using it again because it's a map of reality. It, it literally includes every subject we ever talk about. Because every subject I ever talk about is must be on this, this map, as you wish. Although it could be a more complex one. 
where all these distinctions are more clearly made of which, why this one is separated from this one and all that. You could probably, someone probably could explain if they, if they knew. I think it's called the Mount Meru or something like this, this whole structure, the, the, the Mount Meru, the structure of reality. I think this is one of the depictions of Mount Meru. But um, I don't know exactly what it's from, but it's a beautiful example. So I hope that helps a little bit again for the spiral girdle of eternity coming into existence, into the lost realm of everythingness. And the way back is through stillness, through silence, through meditation, which is the dropping away of the attention off of all the objects so you can return back into nothing. And then through intimation and insight, not through any objective information, but through knowledge, through Gnostic knowledge, you get informed, but not as information, but you get downloaded through the through resting in here as nothing. You just get this knowledge. It's just there. It's just you. It's not something that you have to, you know, gather. It's just instantaneous. That's why it's called insight or realization. It's just sudden Gnostic knowledge that is there because it's always been there. It's just that you have to be still enough to be able to not be distracted by all the stuff that's down here. Thoughts and memories and emotions and historical stuff and theories and philosophy. This is all the, the, the layers of veiling that cover up the, the knowledge, the direct knowledge of what you truly are right up in the discon. Just remain as nothing and everything that is valuable, that's true, will be revealed instantaneously through, through Gnostic knowledge. So uh, I hope that helps and um, I'll be going into more details uh, let's aspects segments of it probably in upcoming videos depending on how it flows so another very important part in this structure that I almost forgot to add in is that when you're in this structure everybody is and you're you have gone up the cone the higher up you've gone up the cone the more that you can um, see reality from a higher perspective so in other words once you go up into stillness, go through stillness and drop away from the existential form, all the forms, all the things, and you go still and silent and you travel upstream like a salmon swimming up the river, you're, because of stillness you can, you can resist the downcoming stream of, of inf eternity, um, the beam of eternity coming down into form. When you can resist that by being still enough, you, you go up the stream and you realize a higher reality. That's what's called insights or realizations. And then when you have had those realizations, for a while they're very impressive, maybe at the first day or week, but then they just become part of your, your normal understanding. You acclimatize to the new state of realization, your new place in the girdle. And so the higher up you get, the more perspective you have on the lower levels. But that means two things. One, first of all, you can now see clearer. You can now see the bigger perspective. You see more of reality, but you can still function in the lower world of existence and understand all the people that have not gotten out of the illusion yet. So although you might get a little bit irritated sometimes with them being so stubborn on staying stuck down there, you can't convey this to anybody because from down in the, in the illusion, Trying to look up at reality, you see nothing but your own conceptualizations or belief structures. This is what, what we could consider the veils. So looking up from ignorance into truth, not through stillness, because through stillness you can see it. But since the people who are not, haven't seen that yet are not still enough to see up there, they haven't reached that level of going through back into the cone of intelligence, they can't see up, but everybody up can see down. So... The closer you get in and higher up into the cone, the more and the more and the more you can see of reality. And then what happens is the people who are down there who don't understand what you're doing call you a conspiracy theorist or a philosophizer or just, you know, whatever. They all think it's just imagination, what we're talking about here. It's because when they look up, they don't, they see nothing but the veil. They see all the confusion, all the ideas and all the concepts murmuring like a big blend of chaos like you see down in that drawing. However, for the ones sitting up there, it's clear as daylight because they've seen it. But that which is still unseen by them above them might be still philosophy theorizing and um, 
the, the ring of truth where people recognize it, but somehow they can't hold on to it. They say, wow, you, we, I can listen to what, what this guy says or that guy says or this guru says or that guru says. And I, although it sounds true, they still get stuck in the old realm down there because it hasn't become their full realized embodied living experience yet. And so looking up from ignorance into the truth must be done through stillness. Then you realize and you get insights and then you, um, be, that becomes your new perspective. However, just looking up as like an intellectual mind and thinking it's a concept and wanting to get it as information, trying to grasp the truth as a information, as a concept, as a belief structure, that never works. And so only the ones up can look down and see everything below them, but the ones below them, uh, the ones that are lower into the, uh, in existence, they can only see more demonic stuff, uh, but not n not more truthful stuff. So looking down, you can see everything below you, up to the, up to the realization point that you've reached. But looking up, back up, that's why explaining to people, explaining to people that are not ready, that are into this, doesn't work because the leap is too big, the cognitive dissonance is too big. They haven't made the journey back home through stillness yet. But the point I'm making is that. At the line in this drawing, at the division point in this drawing where the cone comes into existence, everything below that line is the lost world. To get to reality, you actually must go within. The inner space, the inner journey is the only real journey. Everything out here is otherwise illusion.